Hello. Welcome back to the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Podcast. I'm your host, James Ford. We have Mac. This is episode seven. Yeah, thanks for joining us last week when we had Donald Trump. Uh, it was good times. We were supposed to have Rogan, but we didn't call him, and we didn't ask, so he's not here. Well, we were too busy smoking a big-ass blunt with Donald Trump. Yeah, that's totally what happened. <laughs> Go ahead and find that in the archives, guys. <laughs> Anyways, today we're going to continue our talk about guns from episode six. And then we're going to kind of merge into mindset and a little bit of like mental health. I took a break there for a little while just because I was dealing with some some personal things that were in my life that I had to get rid of and deal with. That would anyway. be other people. Anyways, yes, other people. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Anyway, so what's our first topic? So we kind of we kind of left off on New York State and California, and I figured just to kind of flaunt it in their faces, we'll talk a little bit about some of the some of the guns that we're looking forward to. One that we're going to test fire later, and then uh, maybe a little bit about our first pistols. Yeah, that seems good. to be the topic of the day. All right. Uh, so I know earlier you said you bought a Gen Three Glock. That was your first pistol. Yeah, that was my first pistol. When was it? Oh man. 2012, 13. Okay. What, so, what, I don't remember. Which Glock was it? Um, I th- think it was... Dude, I don't even remember. Man. Dude, it's been so long. <laughs> so, well, that's crazy to me because I remember everything about my first firearm purchase. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I know it was a Glock. I know it was a Gen 3. I just don't remember... It might have been a 19. I don't know if they're... Were they making 19s then? Yes. Yeah, it, might, it was probably a 19 then. I don't remember it, to be honest. It was so long ago. I don't keep track of that stuff. Did you sell it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, mine, I bought a uh, Springfield Armory XDM in 9mm. This was in 2009 when it was the handgun pistol of the year. They only made it a 9 and 40 but I figured I was in Iraq at the time. I was like, well, I shoot a 9 mil all the time. This was my first pistol of my own. So I was like, eh, we'll go with that. Yeah. Ended up buying a bunch of 45s after that. But <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts about people buying 40s? Because for a while there, the federal law, federal law enforcement officers were using 40s. So 40, there's, there's a couple of reasons that they went 40. One, because they were using 10 millimeter which was a phenomenal round for stopping power. Mm-hmm. It kind of bridges the gap between the 9 mil and the 45. Mm-hmm. However, the 10 mil can be a little snappy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you still see some of the holdovers from that in the 40 cal. Mm-hmm. They're pretty much the same same bullet. There's there's some differences to them, but mm-hmm. you know, you when you reload 40 cal, you're also you can also reload 10 millimeter on the same the same equipment. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to change anything other than the overall length and the powder charge. Now, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, I think one, some of the reasons why they stopped using the 40 and they went back to the 9 was because after a period of time, the 40s were actually damaging the guns. No, I've, I've never really seen issues with 40s damaging the guns. Uh, okay. Guns are built uh, to stand up to certain so pressures. So that's probably just all internet rumor. You know, there there's probably always a case for part of internet rumor to to be based in fact. Yeah, I would say that the biggest the biggest reasons that they switched from forty to nine mil is one capacity, mm-hmm. as well as price. Yeah, nine mil's cheaper to shoot. Nine mil's cheaper and it does the same thing practically. Not that exact. It kills people. <laughs> it does. It <laughs> does kill people. It stops the threat. Um. <laughs> But then, you know, there's the same reason that you get away from, like, the 45, because then you're not dealing with the capacity anymore. Yeah. Sure, you've got raw, unadulterated stopping power. It's probably cheaper to shoot, too. Much cheaper. Uh, When I was reloading a lot, I was reloading 49 and 45, and 9 mil was half the price to reload than 45. Yeah. Uh, and forty falls right in right in between there. And you know the gun that I have right now, this is a forty cal. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a nice one. I mean, I remember you showed that to me 
long time ago. You built that thing yourself too. I did. This is this is my fancy race gun. Um, I'm shooting a shooting a competition here in in May, shooting double tap championship out out in Wichita Falls. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So my buddy was going to come out and he shoots open, which is a race gun. So red dot. Thumb rest compensator. When in May are you doing this? The second weekend in May. I might come out and watch. Okay. You can stay in the hotel with me. All right. Yeah. We can spoon. As long as I'm the small spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll, 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 we'll face let, away from each other like an old married couple. I'll let you give me some nub love. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my own nub that I could rub if I wanted to. Thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you know, it comes down to I've got pretty much any caliber i've got some wildcat calibers one of my favorite guns to carry is my my little uh, 327 federal magnum revolver Mm -hmm. not a common caliber not one that i will ever reload because it's just not worth the the hassle of getting into yeah which is crazy because i'm a brass a brass snob yeah so i think i've kept every 327 case that i've ever fired yeah so i've just got hundreds of them in boxes yeah that I'll never use for anything. Yeah. So if any of you guys want to reload thirty two or three twenty seven, hit me up. I got you, fam. <laughs> so what's what's the next gun that we're talking about? What's the next thing? So one of the things we were talking about earlier is that my open gun. She's I, I've been running her since two thousand thirteen when I built her, and she really needs some upgrades. You know, I, I had a lot less experience than I do now especially with gun building and fabrication and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I kind of want to upgrade it, but I kind of want to stick in the Glock ish category. Um, I know that I could go really fancy and go like a 2011, an STI 2011, which I love. Yeah. But something about people getting pissy about using a Glock as an open gun. Yeah. Really drives my gears. Yeah. But POF came out with a polymer gun. You just showed me that. That thing looked pretty amazing. It does. So it's the the P19. I'd have to get my hands on it first because I, obviously one of the biggest things that I do is is the feel of the pistol in my mm-hmm. hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's the first thing you should always do. Yeah. So so when I worked at the range, the, what I always told told people was look for the one that's pretty. Yeah. If you like the look of it. Let's put it in your hand. If it feels right in your hand, let's shoot that one. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with looking at a gun and saying, ooh, that's pretty. I want to shoot that. No harm, no foul. I do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, Hell, that's part of the reason I want to shoot your HK later. Because pretty. Yeah. And it It feels feels good in my hand. It it really does. It feels phenomenal. Uh, But that POF, it's gorgeous. However, some of the things that I'm worried about are things that I probably shouldn't worry about with POF. Because mm-hmm. they make fantastic rifles, yeah, uh, absolutely great rifles. I don't see why it wouldn't translate to the pistol, mm-hmm. but it's a Glock clone. Yeah, it I looks mean, just like a Glock. Yeah, it's it's a Glock. Uh, it effectively looks like a Glock that has some work done on the slide to lighten it, which I like. Mm-hmm. I love slide lightening. It's one thing that I wish my pistol had a little bit faster cycling. Yeah. Um. But it would come down to to a lot of factors. What is what does it weigh? What is what is a slide weigh compared to what it what it weighs now? You know, what's my ability to get different triggers in there? Or yeah. you know, there's there's too many factors. There's that, a lot of factors that come into like mm-hmm. you know, there's so many things you can do to a gun. Some guns you can't do, you can't do a whole lot to. Yeah, and and the thing about it is that because it is such a new pistol, do I run the the chance of how much fabrication am I going to have to do? How much yeah. adjusting? How much, how, or everything. how much like aftermarket parts are going to be made for it? That's why. Yeah, because there's some things I won't fabricate. Yeah. Like I'm not going to fabricate a whole trigger system. So the the HK that I bought that last weekend, it's a it's a concealed version. It's the HK uh, VP9 SK, and it's been out for I think almost a year now, maybe a little a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I, I waited that long on purpose because the last time I went out and bought a brand new gun and, you know, it had just been on the market. Everyone was talking about it. It was that, uh, that SIG, the SIG's, uh, first striker fire. Ugh. And it had all those problems with it. You know, the drop safeties and 
all these other issues with it. And I learned my lesson that time. So I waited a year before I bought this one. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason, you know, I, and really no one has any, has it had a, a lot of bad things to say about it. And now there's aftermarket triggers for it too. Yeah. And, and HK and SIG are completely different, uh, kind of responsibilities of gun manufacturing. Yeah. So not, not to knock SIG. I've got yeah. my personal, personal opinion, but they, they make a good gun from everything everybody says. Yeah. For every, for everyday life, they make a good, good gun. I won't ever buy one though. Yeah. Uh, mine has nothing to do with the firearm itself. It has everything to do with their old sales staff, yeah. but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but that HK, I mean, it's just a different mentality when they're building. Yeah. And it's kind of like buying a new car. Yeah. You don't buy the first year of a generation. Yeah. They're working out the kinks. Yeah. It happens. The The difference between guns and cars is that they don't tell you all the things that they're changing without changing the model. Yeah. So, uh, so we talk, uh, you know, we're real excited about shooting this HK today. We, we've got, we've got a few things we get. I to. got a, I got a funny story. So when I bought this HK... I walked into an undisclosed gun shop back in San Antonio. I'm not going to name it. I don't want to get sued for slandering. <laughs> and, and this gun shop is known for jacking up their prices and being overpriced. And I knew this. But on their social media, they had advertised that they were having a deal on their HKs. I'm not going to name the deal because if I do, people might know what, I'm talk- what gun shop I'm talking about. I walk in there. After spending a day with my one of my buddies, and I'm like looking at the full size one, and I'm like, "Wow, this thing's five hundred and you know fifty dollars." I'm like, "That's a pretty good price for a full size, you know, mm-hmm. HK VP9." And I'm looking at the, I didn't want that one. I wanted the conceal one. You know, eventually I'll get the full size, but I want the I want the conceal one because that's the one I'm going to be, be shooting the most. And I buy it, I, or I didn't buy it, but I ended up buying the 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 VP9 SK, which is the conceal, but. I had to haggle them a little bit because they were pricing it. They were trying to sell it to me for six hundred and thirty dollars. It's almost a hundred dollars more than the full size. I'm like, why am I gonna pay more money for less material? It made absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> so I told the guy, I was like, I'm not buying this at that price. And he's like, Would you buy it for the for the price of if it was the same price as the full size? I was like, I'd consider buying it. But then he goes off, he's doing whatever, and he gives me enough time to go look on the internet. And first place I go look is Bass Pro. You know, I, I didn't know that generally they're not going to screw you over on the prices, and I want to compare it, you know, to see what they're selling it for. Mm-hmm. It's a good place to start, you know, when you want to compare it. Or what, is it Gun Broker is another good place? Um, gun Broker, Bud's Guns. Yeah, you can go to all those sorts of websites, and I just pulled up Bass Pro because it was the first thing that came up. They were selling it for $499. I told the manager, I was like, Bass Pro selling sell the same gun for $499. I was like, I'm going to go up there and buy it from them. And I walked out. As I'm backing out in my Jeep, the manager comes running out the front door. I'll sell it to you for $499. Wow. I was like, sweet, good deal. I didn't know you were backing out when this I was happened. backing out. That's all you were I was getting ready. There was no BS in that. No, I, I was no BS in that <laughs> shit. <laughs> and then and then they proceeded to to talk shit. They're like, oh, he's gonna go, he was gonna go buy this gun from Bass Pro, and I was like, fuck yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? I'm a moron. I know, I'm not fucking dumb. I'm gonna go get it up there because it's cheaper. What magazines? Thirty five bucks. So what? Yeah, and, and you know there there is absolutely that for for those of you that complain small business whatever. That, yeah. that's all well and good. However. Price gouge is a price gouge. Yeah. like uh, It's the same gun. Yeah. When you're talking about a $150 difference, it's a lot different than, you know, pricing it up 15, 20 bucks. Because I'll pay the 15, 20 bucks. I'll pay 15, 20 bucks. Small business? Absolutely. But $150. That's a little extreme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've driven down the road to get a suppressor at a better price, but for $100. Like, yeah, for $100. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's my story about this. But I'm excited. I've waited a very long time. I've talked about it forever. And I finally have it. I'm going to go. Um, I'm probably going to order some case, some, some holsters. The only, the only holsters I can really see is they have it is Bravo Concealment. I'm probably going to get some from them. Yo, this is going to sound weird. Go to Etsy. Etsy? 
Well, I'm going to go to um, On Your Six while I'm back. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, and have them custom make me one. Yeah, see, that's nice. That's the thing about Etsy is it's a lot of, you know, small businesses. Yeah. But there's a lot of a lot of guys that'll make just the cheap Kydex holsters for you. Yeah. Um, uh, normally, normally I would buy my holsters from um, Patriot Holsters. Mm-hmm. Those are my go-to companies, um, but they, right now they're not making it for the VP9 SK. So I am. I, I kind of sound like a, a crazy person. Uh, nothing against T Rex, but I, I have one of his. I have a sidecar. I use that probably more than any other holster I use. Yeah, uh, I use a lot of Blade Tech stuff. Yeah. for anything outside of the holster or outside of the waist. Yeah, band I'll use Blade Tech. Uh, super consistent quality. I've never had any issues with them. I use them for. My race gun, or you know, I used to I used them for years in competition, and then I've got you know some of my race gun stuff from Double Alpha, and yeah, um, and I have one from a small company. Makes this awesome. It's it's not a belly band, but it's it's effectively a Velcro strap that goes around you, so you don't have to use your belt loops at all. Mm-hmm. And he's it's got a spot for my for my uh, my gun, and he he had it molded for. My light that was on it, which is a huge thing for me. That's it's, awesome. It's, it's not easy to find people that'll mold it for a light or no, man. Like, yeah. No, it's, no, like, it's and, so hard. It is, and and you do see a lot more nowadays for for the high rise um, sites for for having suppressors on them, but still light bearing is still a pain in the ass. Yeah, uh, especially when you start talking about like my 1911. I love my 1911. I've got a Springfield. Um, MC operator love that gun. Yeah, but a lot of places don't sell holsters with light bearing for that gun. Yeah, massive pain in the ass for me. Yeah, I would love to carry that, especially going out hog hunting and stuff. That's the gun I carry. Yeah, but I'd like to have my lap, a light mounted on it. But Etsy, I've found good places. Uh, I know our buddy that we're going to shoot with today. One of his most used. Concealed holsters for his uh, Glock 23 is from Etsy. Yeah. That's awesome. Came within two weeks. There wasn't this six to ten week, you know, hold or wait period, which is ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I went with T-Rex with is because they have, you know, the, the prefabbed ones. Yeah. Where you don't get as many options to choose and customize, but it'll ship in a day. Yeah. And. Yeah, I had that. I had that issue with. Um, Patriot hol- I love their holsters I love what they do with them because you get a lot of options but when I had ordered my first holster from them they were in the process of upgrading all their equipment to make holsters so mm-hmm. it took like an entire month mm-hmm. but I was patient enough and they were really they were really they were pretty cool about it well normally I'm pretty patient uh, but this was this was my first appendix carry gun or um, carry holster so I really wanted to get get hands on and try it out and try it out works. uh especially you know because appendix carry guns are or the the holsters are a little bit more expensive because of the quote unquote in thing yeah um i use it all the time not necessarily because i'm the biggest fan of appendix carry or one i'm fast with it two i can keep it on me a lot easier in the car yeah that was the one thing about the the other holster, though, because the other holster, um, I use it all the time. I mean, I can use it in basketball shorts, which is a big thing for me. Sweatpants because I work from home, so I don't always wear real pants. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude, whenever I'm home, I'm always in my boxers. Well, you know, I have kids at home, so that'd be <laughs> creepy. Um, my dad, my dad used to run around in his underwear all the time. Yeah, but I'm not trying to bat, uh, you know. Well, bat wing my my children and here. it was so nasty i'm not trying he, to brain these kids he, yeah you don't want to do it because i'm scarred for life from my dad because he walked around in whitey tidies <laughs> i remember i remember seeing brown stains in the back oh that just ain't right <laughs> that just ain't right you gotta wear some blacky whiteies or blacky tidies there <laughs> i was like it was they're so nasty I don't know why guys wore whitey tighties. They were they're so fucking gross. That was the option, man. Fucking gross. You had whitey tighties or nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, I, go, I just wear nothing. Well, you know, those are definitely the good days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey man, it's, it gets hot down here in Texas. 
<laughs> that are uh, when I was in Iraq, we had flight suits. Yeah, and we cut off the top of our shirt just under the or just where the armor pit was, so it looked like we were wearing skivvy shirts. Yeah, and then we wear nothing under the flight suits. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. So what's the next next what's the next gun topic we're talking about? Uh, gun topic. I, I mean, have we covered them all? We kind of have. I mean, we're we're gonna go shoot. What today. was your first rifle? My first rifle. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, so I got my first rifle when I was 12, on my 12th birthday. Yeah. It was a little Rossi single shot 22, 20 gauge combination. No kidding. Yeah. So the barrel swaps out. It, it, it's an awesome gun. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, both of them are no longer in uh, in my possession for other reasons. My, my pistol I sold to my stepdad. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was getting stationed out in Okinawa, and then I I knew I was planning on going to California after that. Mm-hmm. So at the time, being young, I was like, well, you know, I want to keep it in the family. Yeah, uh, it ended up getting sold, which is still kind of a, a sore spot, and I'm probably not going to tell about this podcast because he'd probably get pissy. <laughs> um, and then the uh, the the Rossi kind of went the same, yeah, the same way. Um, yeah. Those are. Two guns. The, the the pistol really pissed me off. Yeah. The rifle not so much. I mean, I can get a Rossi. It's a dime a dozen. But the yeah. the pistol was the twenty nine or two thousand nine pistol of the year. Yeah. Our handgun of the year, rather. Oh, like it yeah. had a had a special emblem on it. It was just awesome. Um, not the greatest shooting gun. There's a reason I never bought another XDM. But yeah, you know, it, it had that sentimental value. And then I was like, I would have like if if I knew that you were were needing that. Like I would have bought it back from you in a heartbeat. Yeah, not a big deal. Yeah, he uh, should have just said something. Yeah, and that's what that's what frustrated me. Yeah. Um, my my first rifle was a, a Sig. I didn't. I was I wasn't allowed to own own one growing up, so I didn't get one until I was an adult. Mm-hmm. But my first rifle was a Sig five five six. Was it? Yeah. It was a good rifle, but I ended up getting rid of it, obviously, as mm-hmm. most of us do with our first guns. <laughs> but what, um, you know, I got some interesting news for you, though. So on the 17th on St. Patrick's Day, I'm having a party up in the hospital. Yeah, a buddy. A nice party on my throat. Yeah, and I buddy. was telling my buddy Jared at, from from the gym at CrossFit, I was like, yeah, you know, I haven't really told a lot of people because it's, you know. It's just a fucking surgery. It's my, you know, I've had plenty of freaking surgeries. And there we go with my hinges going off. I wonder what girl that is. And uh, she's probably ugly. Yeah. Oh, I got a good story. He'll probably swipe right. I felt, I felt bad. Right's the right way. I'll tell right? you a story. I'll tell you a story about a girl, a girl I, I met online just this past week. And uh, this chick, this chick, um, this chick, so she, um, she had, uh, what was I talking about? I got this hinge chick, this hinge chick. Well, no, no, we're going to go back to Jared had an ADD moment. I saw a squirrel. <laughs> so Jared, I'm telling him this and he goes, I'm like, man, you know, I'm going to be real. They're going to cut open, you know, and take all this, the soft tissue out that's in my throat. You know, it's causing me, you know, I can't breathe right. I can't suck dicks right. You, you basically know? have a cloaca. Yeah. You know, I got a bunch of soft tissue. You know, my my clitoris and my throat is oversized. Mm-hmm. It needs to be removed. <clears throat> Anyways, let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> get some of that soft tissue out of the way. So I'm telling Jared this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be coming here and cross it and be able to suck down oxygen. And he goes, oh, you're going to be able to suck down more than that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, that's just another hole, right? Yeah. Until it heals, if it heals. Yeah. Now we'll we'll take care of you. We'll bring our own knives to your your throat party. We'll we'll take out some uh, some stitches for you. <laughs> I hope they give me dissolvable stitches because I don't want anyone doing that. Uh, you know, it's you've had plenty of surgeries. You've had plenty of stitches. I I oddly and don't mind the feeling of the stitches coming out. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's so, kind of cathartic after a. I have developed, I used to not be scared or like worry about needles or IVs, but I've been given so many IVs, had so many injections and all this other crap from in the hospitals. I fucking hate them now. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand it because people suck at giving them. 
Mm-hmm. I know when people are good, and they, and they and I know when people just suck. And I fucking hate. I hate needles now. I hate getting IVs. I can't stand them because the average person just fucking sucks at giving them. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm like I'd rather have let, I'd rather let one of my military buddies do it because I know they're going to be careful and they're probably going to do it right because <laughs> they're going to be careful. You know? I've got some good pictures on my Facebook of just blood flowing down my arm from people messing up their IVs and their uh, combat life changer <laughs> yeah, training. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so you know another great story. I got through reading the book, uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I bought the book a long time ago and I. I I read it. I read. It, I read it last month, but I didn't get the same. You know, I, I, I kind of. I'm an auditory learner, so I like mm-hmm. to listen to things. So I bought the, you know, audio book, and I listened to it in about three days. This is the best freaking book I've ever. Really? Yeah, one of the best ones. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I, and I, I got. I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm throwing out f bombs more, and so going back to this hinge chick. You know, I'm, I'm generally, I try to be a nice guy. I try not to screw people over. If, if I need to listen, I'll listen, you know, but every now and then, you know, I get caught up in being over empathetic towards people, not, not realizing my own fucking boundaries. So long story short, I'm on hinge. This girl, I don't remember what light side it was. It was probably hinge, but. You know, I just, I don't even read half the freaking profile. Sorry, girls. I just keep swiping until like someone hits me back, you know. It's a tough world out there. <laughs> and, and I talked to this girl for like three days. And I finally go read her profile. And she's like, I'm looking for another man that's in a loving relationship with Jesus. And I just, I put my head down. And I just started shaking it back and forth. I was like, I am corrupt as shit. <laughs> Well, maybe you'll get another uh, blowjob prayer for your leg to grow back. <laughs> That's all I can think when I see her at the store, man, is, oh my God, the magical blowjob powers. <laughs> you know, thank gosh. They're going to turn. Thank gosh she yeah. does not listen to this podcast. Oh, man. But you could have been turned into a into a lizard and grew hey, back your leg, man. If maybe if she sucked it hard enough, my leg would have grown back. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would have had a blow. It's like a balloon. <laughs> you have to suck on it and then blow. <laughs> don't forget to tie it off at the end, though. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want the air coming out. <laughs> the image of your your stump just like inflating like a balloon was <laughs> very present in my mind. So I highly recommend the book. It's a great book. He he kind of like starts off like saying, you know, basically, the more you not give a fuck about shit that's going on. And other people's lives are not worrying about stuff so much, the happier you're going to be. You know, it's a book about becoming happy and like cutting out bullshit. And the reason why I was, list- I decided to listen to it because I read it once. I was like, I need to listen to it again because I'm an auditory learner. Mm-hmm. I was dealing with some bullshit in my life. I had another crazy person I was dealing with for about three months. Mm-hmm. A little bit longer than that, but for the past three months, it was really bad. I was going to say, it's been about a year. <laughs> yeah, it's been almost a year, but the past three months was the worst. It was the worst. And I just, I kind of realized, you know, I came to this point where I was like, I cannot, I can't, you can't fix people. It's not your job to fix people. But, and that's why I was asking some of my other people, I was like, hey, step in and do this. I can't handle this. It's driving me up the fucking wall. You know, Mm -hmm. it's affecting me. And that's why I did it. But I, you know, I, I realized through this that, that, Mental health is like fucking real. Yeah. Mental health issues are real and they're a serious, serious problem with people. And and one of the biggest things about it is that people, one, aren't aware of it. Yeah, they, they're not aware of it. When you tell them and when you confront people and you tell them, hey, you got this going on, most people get offended by it. Mm-hmm. They're not receptive and be like, man, maybe I am really jacked up. Well, nobody, nobody wants to think to themselves that their brain isn't functioning properly. Yeah. I mean, I know my, I know I have problems, you know, that's, I I have problems, you know, dealing with, you know, stress. And that's why, you know, I started doing things like, uh, which I'll talk about later on, but yeah, for the, for the past three months, you know, if you know someone 
And oftentimes, mental health, you really don't see it if you're just a friend. You got to be like close. Sometimes it's the family members or the like a romantic partner mm-hmm. that, that sees it. But if you realize that someone is dealing with mental health, do not be afraid to reach out. And, I, and that's what I had to do, you know, with this person. You know, it was boiled down to where it's like, I'm telling... I'm telling people that that I think are close to you that you need mental help. You need help. You know, and that's what it came down to. So don't be afraid to do it. It can be embarrassing, but ultimately it could be good for the person. It could be the best thing that ever happened to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and lastly, so, the, you know, merging on that topic, you know, for a while, you know, since this has been over with, um, I've been using this, this app that I've heard on other podcasts, um, it's called the Daily Calm, and it's just, you know, my, my routine is in the morning, I make my coffee, I let my dog out, and I sit on the couch, and I wait for my coffee to get made, and I don't do nothing until I coffee, and I realize, you know, I could be, you know, meditating, and so I turn on this Daily Calm app, and I just sit there and listen to the instructions, and I have the worst freaking ADD in the world, because she'll be like, close your eyes, and I'll close my eyes for like two minutes, and I'll open it up. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I'm supposed to be closing my eyes. That's that FOMO, man. You don't know what could be what could be looked at. That that wall is real pretty. <laughs> but it's it's great listening to the music. You know, doing this, it's been a game changer in the morning for me. Uh, you know, if if you're dealing with stuff, I highly recommend you get it. You know, this is this is a great app. I I, I didn't I you know it's like sixty bucks maybe after taxes, probably close to seventy, but it's great. On, on that topic too, um, I found I came across this this Instagram page called Tactical Calories, and I haven't looked at everything they make, but the one thing that caught my eye because it got shared around on social media was a steak seasoning called Nub Rub. Outstanding! I am going to buy this and rub it on your nub. I'm going to rub it all over my nub. Can I massage it in? We can make a slow mo video of me just dumping the nub rub all over it and then rubbing it. Well, man, you gotta you gotta make sure you get every nook and cranny. We gotta do it. We'll do it like ASMR. <laughs> Hear the seasoning rub on his nub. You have to whisper. <laughs> Was I not whispering? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know what a whisper is. I don't know how to whisper. Ugh. I can't. Whisper. I'm I'm a loud mouth. I'll admit it. Which is why he needs daily calm. Yeah. Which is why we're opening my throat up more. Yeah, because that's what we need. Yeah. More air to create more vibration to make you even louder. You know, I might have speaking problems for a while there, trying to get used to a new voice. Because my, my, my voice might sound different. Is that going to be like going through puberty again? I don't know. This is going to be an interesting time. I, I expect you. If you don't make fun of me for having talking problems, I'm, I'm going to be really upset. I don't think that you do anything that I don't make fun of. Well, Why good. would this be any different? Good. <laughs> I just kind of see an opportunity and take it. Yeah, that's how it should be. I mean, yeah. you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got to apologize for the past few months of being kind of ghost ghosting the podcast, but I handled it. I hope this person gets the help after listening to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the way things happen you know and and let's be honest she's probably going to listen to this she probably will so you know you know who you are it's not that there's any aggressive or, ho- or aggression or hostility towards it it's just sometimes you need help yeah sometimes we all do it we all go through period times and the best thing for you is you don't you know if it's so bad that you've been dealing with this stuff your entire life sometimes it's better just to reach out to people yeah you got to be humble and admit that that this is going on and you can't do this alone. You need the support of everyone around you. You can't just sit there and hide shit because the more you hide it, the more you're going to go turn into this like loner state and seclude yourself from everyone. And being alone can lead to suicide. Oh, yeah. You know, lo- lonely. What was that study I read a long time ago? Loneliness is a bigger contributor to suicide than PTSD. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the worst things. That that PTSD can lead to loneliness, but that's one of the worst things that that some veterans do with themselves is they get they, they deal with these problems that they don't really talk about. 
And then they just end up hiding in their freaking hooch, you know, when they get out and end up drinking. And then they become lonely. And next thing you know, they're in the bathtub or who knows what they've done, done to themselves, you know? Absolutely. But if you know anyone, reach out to them. Reach out to the family. If you're even suspicious that someone is dealing with a mental health problem, just go talk to them. Just be friendly about it, too. But anyways, that concludes episode seven.